if you read any health or wellness books or you browse on internet, you might be surprised by the following what I'm going to say to you. Why don't I give you an exact diet uh, and list of what to eat and what to avoid as everyone else seems to do? Well, my first answer is that no one diet is perfect for everyone with few exceptions. I don't believe that there are foods out there that are bad for everyone. You know very well that some people eat super healthy, others don't, but both groups uh, might be very, very healthy. So there is way more uh, to the fact that we eat this and that it's how the body processes what is your emotional state and etc so anyone who tells you that they hold the secret to the perfect eating plan isn't being honest with you or doesn't know a thing uh, we are all unique with different needs uh, based on our genetics our metabolic type our morphological type our blood type, emotional type, and our immunotype, and more. That's why we need to work with people to find out which um, plan is best for them and how to change it um, through the periods of healing so it serves them best. Finding a doable and healthy diet for you takes time, trial and error, personalization and patience um, the first successes from the right diet if the client follows everything in my plan come after around the third week between the third and the sixth week is where the clients see changes in their behavior changes in their body uh, changes in their uh, condition uh, if they have a chronic health condition. So instead of driving yourself crazy, uh, trying all trendy diets out there, if you want to focus on balancing of your immunotype, for which I'll be talking in another video, follow the recommendations, which I will give you below. They're general, but you can tailor them to your needs. If you get stuck and need more guidance, I suggest you working with a functional dietitian or nutritionist uh, to help you correct any nutrient uh, deficiencies you might have. Identify any food uh, sensitivities and nail down a specific nutrition plan that works for you. You can also get in touch with me for an evaluation and a suggestive food plan or list of foods, I would say. To get started, incorporating the following tips will optimize your nutrition and your health. So there are five. Number one, eat less sugar. As we know, sugar equals blood sugar issues and blood sugar issues equals inflammation and inflammation equals immune imbalance therefore the best nutritional advice i can give is to cut down on obvious sources of sugar in your life i'm not going to go deeper into this because there's so much information out there if you need more on the topic of sugar, please contact me and I will be very glad to help you with resources. Eat more leafy greens and herbs. Also, eatable wild plants if possible, only if you are sure that they are edible. These leafy greens are like nature's multivitamin. They contain a ton of beneficial vitamins and minerals, which are invaluable for your immune system, which are in the right consistency, form and shape, which your body recognizes, different than the one uh, which is in the pill. So 
if you add leafy greens to at least two of your meals every day, you are taking a huge step towards your better nutrition. And my favorite uh, leafy greens include mm -hmm. lettuce, all kind of lettuces. I have this every day. Spinach. Um, I have three in my garden. I like variety. I have New Zealand spinach, the spinach with the red tops and uh, regular spinach. Spinach has very tough fiber. So I either steam or boil a little bit or marinate before I consume. Arugula, uh, bitter vegetables are very, very good for you. That's why I suggested also wild uh, leafy greens. Baby kale, personally, I'm not a big fan of kale, but baby kale I can tolerate if it's steamed or cooked in the salad if it's marinated swiss chard i also steam or cook bok choy watercress sprouted seeds are extremely extremely um, good for your health so if you can get the seeds and sprout them at home that's fantastic of course this is my list remember you have to have your own list a list we're talking about leafy greens here then number three now so it was sugar leafy greens now number three is to address nutrient deficiencies your immune system just doesn't function well when you lack nutrients remember that you might not be aware that you're having problems in this area but you may have uh, low energy or get sick frequently this is a sign of your um, immune system um, disbalance. It's essential to um, shore up any vitamin or mineral deficiencies to have balanced immunity. If you can work with a dietitian or healthcare professional and have nutritional labs uh, done, um, that's not realistic uh, if that's not realistic you can keep a food dairy for a week um, while trying to tailor your nutrition to your needs some of my clients work with food diaries and it works beautifully you just have to monitor your energies uh, you will know after which food what has happened to your body. Did you sleep well? Did you have energy? What I guide people through that and they discover which foods are good for them and which are not so good for them. Most nutrition apps will calculate the macronutrients, the micronutrient content of the foods. So um, if you're eating... Um, for example, you might notice that your diet is low in zinc or selenium because the app calculated it. So you decide to supplement or eat more Brazil nuts to solve this problem or take supplements. If your food journal doesn't reveal any trends or deficiencies, taking a high quality multivitamin is another solution uh for your uh, deficiencies so make sure you're covering most of your bases this is especially important if you can't get tested in a lab for nutrition deficiencies i just want to um, tell you a little thing about the multivitamin just a caution all water and fat soluble uh, vitamins are in one capsule that means that it's a challenge when you take them. If you take them with the food, the water uh, soluble will not really do anything for you. If you take them, the capsule with water, the fat soluble, it's not going to do anything for you. So you can try either way and see what is the change in your body. If it's working the way you take it, if you take it with food and it's working, that means you had a lack of 
fat soluble vitamins and you might even want to take them separately not to take the multivitamin you have to consult with someone to um, recommend the amounts but still multivitamins contain a nice blend of nutrients that can help you get some of the immune boosting super ingredients and while multivitamin uh, typically doesn't have high enough levels of any one nutrient to totally correct a long-standing deficiency it might help prevent it uh, from getting worse so this is the least the multivitamin can do for you Number four is to reduce alcohol consumption. Yeah, I know. Only one glass per week. Please, don't do it. Let me tell you a few things about the alcohol, which I think you don't know. Alcohol is a very sneaky substance that can really derail your blood sugar, as well as other aspects of your health. Most alcoholic drinks contain a great deal of sugar in the form of carbohydrates, which directly raise your blood sugar levels. Is it worth it? The big culprits are mixed drinks, beer and cider, while dry, dry wine is lower in sugars and uh, hard alcohol has none. However, alcohol itself is a fuel. Remember that? That's right. Ethanol can be burned into for fuel by our body. And in fact, it has uh, seven calories per gram. That's more than the protein and the carbohydrates uh, have. What's more, alcohol will be burned for energy before the fat, the carbs, or the protein. So when you're drinking alcohol with your meal, the alcohol is burned while the rest of the calories are stored as fat. Um, just a moment here. I do not suggest the alcohol to be drunk on an empty stomach. That doesn't mean that I suggest so. This is just one of the ways that alcohol contributes to weight gain, blood sugar imbalance, and diabetes, which can sabotage the immune system over time. So another reason to limit your alcohol intake is the fact that it's toxic to the gut microbes and disrupts the gut barrier function, uh, which results in a leaky gut. I have a video on a leaky gut, a short one. It also affects both, both the innate and the adaptive immune response, weakens your defenses, which can put us at risk for infections and chronic inflammation. Well, when alcohol is broken down, a toxic uh, metabolite um, is um, very harmful to all of our cells that forms. It's uh, very harmful to all of our cells and increases oxidative stress on the body. Uh, that requires more antioxidants to keep the peace. So, Alcohol is known to damage um, the lungs, leading to an increase in the risks of pneumonia, for instance. And studies have even shown that alcohol contributes to seasonal allergies. It's associated with an increase in common symptoms of asthma, um, hay fever, like sneezing, itching, headaches, and coughing. There are many ways to reduce your alcohol intake, and I suggest trading your beer, wine, or cocktail for another refreshing drink, such as sparkling water with fresh fruits or a squeeze of lime, or an iced turmeric ginger tea. Uh, there are many great tasting, uh, tasting non-alcoholic beers available as well. 
Um, so I think you should um, shop for that and see what you can do for yourself. Then I understand that the alcohol is when we socialize with friends. Make plans that don't revolve around alcohol. The hardest part of reducing alcohol consumption is the social one, the social aspect of drinking. Instead of meeting for happy hour, connect with your friends in a park, go for a hike, have a pottery class together, um, or go for a picnic, um, go to train together. So you can do it. You can work on it and find your own way how to deal with it. But the damage the alcohol does on your brain and on your overall body, it's not worth the drink. Number five is to incorporate the immune boosting superfoods. Now there are lists and lists and lists with superfoods. I will tell you just a few which are the most popular and you don't have to eat all of them. Sorry, there are a lot of wasps and flies here. But you can eat quite a few of them and really get those very valuable nutrients. I'm talking about mushrooms. Mushrooms can be taken... Um, as food uh, mushrooms can be taken as powders added to smoothies uh, in capsules mushrooms are absolutely amazing then you have turmeric and ginger very popular ingredients and the fact that they're so popular doesn't make them less nutrient they are very nutritious and very good for you for the microbiome, for the immunity, and etc. Garlic. I know some people cannot tolerate too much of a garlic, but take a little bit. That's okay. Yes, it lowers the blood pressure, and you, if you have a lower blood pressure, you might want to cook it. Um, it then it has be good benefits for the cardiovascular system. If you crush it in your mouth, it has good benefits for parasites um, and bacteria, um, viruses, which are in the digestive tract, can help you with that. So broccoli sprouts, uh, I'm very big on the sprouts, not really on the broccoli, but the sprouts. Broccoli have a very tough fiber, so uh, they have to be cooked. Uh, if you want to eat them you can get a really a regular dose of super immune boosting nutrients if you consume those foods on a daily basis and you don't have to consume all of them each day so this can be done in so many ways you can consume these items in the form of soups teas uh, curries or even juice them or add them to smoothies so you will get big amount of nutrients there are many green powders that you can add to your water or smoothies that can contain all of these ingredients just watch for the sweeteners in those powders you sweeten your shake don't let them do it for you you decide how much sugar what type of sugar you can put are you going to sweeten it with a fruit and etc if you eat a diverse diet full of colorful fruits and vegetables, as well as some of these ingredients, you will be getting your fair share of the famous polyphenols, which we get for, from certain vegetables. Uh, you will be getting also antioxidants and immune supportive vitamins and minerals. And the best would be to get them from the food because they are in the form, shape and quantity your body knows. And your body knows how to use that. Imagine as a chip to a computer and it fits and the body uh, utilizes um, the majority, the most of it. So the nutritional foundation for a healthy immune system is as simple as that. 
beyond that, it's all about further optimizing and balancing your immunotype. There are four monotypes, and in another video, I will be talking about that. So um, I will be going deeper, diving into more immunotype-specific supplement and nutrient recommendations. Thank you for listening for today and let me know if you have any questions. Join our Healthy and Community Facebook group. If you have any questions, please free to comment below. Don't forget to follow and subscribe for more.